welcome to the Elder Scrolls Online Community Podcast. The date is January 18th, 2014, and you're watching Episode 3. Uh, in today's show, we're going to be discussing the uh, why we're interviewing guilds, of course, uh, delve into the very different structures of these guilds, and provide typical guild advice that uh, may help a lot of the newer guilds that are out there. We'll also be looking at recent news such as SO Best or Worse in 2014. Uh, Forbes is saying it's going to be the worst game in 2014, so certainly something to watch for. Um, while you're watching the show, we encourage you to write questions in chat, and don't forget we'll be doing a uh, spot on shoutouts at the end, and we have another contest to announce later as well. Uh, besides being one of your hosts for the show, I am also a council member for the Daggerfall Covenant Guild, Mostly Harmless. Uh, Alistair, is that uh, the statics coming through again there a bit? Sweet. Thanks very much. And I'd like to introduce my co-host, Vixen. Hi guys, I'm Vixen. I'm the PR officer for Mostly Harmless. Last month we had Unreal Aussies, Daggerfall Authority, and the Nor on the podcast. We had a friendly guild competition, which was very close. It's pretty easy. And it gives people looking for a guild an idea of how active and motivated your current members are this far out from launch. All you have to do is give a shout out for your guild at the end of our live show or a shout out on one or all of our previous YouTube videos and we'll add them up and announce the winners. So now we're happy to welcome the first place winner from last month. They have never been on our show before, but their members are motivated. So please join me in welcoming Alistair from Vulcandine, a part of Legion Gaming. Welcome Alistair. Hey, How's the weather well. there in Brazil? Uh, it's it's hot as hell. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it, anyway, it's just you know like that all the time. So kind of dumb. You know, I'm I'm used to it. <laughs> yep. Very nice. And uh, yeah, we've got some new members on the show too this week. Yes, we also have Swamp Fox, leader of Alwolf Legion, and a former member of the oldest guild, as recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records, the Syndicate. This is a nice new guild that is playing Ebonheart at launch. Their motto is, we play for keeps. Welcome, Swamp Fox. G'day. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's great to see you. Well, I'm in and stealth mode, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back again, guild leader and always entertaining, as well as knowledgeable, DeLeatheris, or as we like to call him, D from the Aldemiri Guild. Welcome, D. Thank you very much, Vixen. Good to be back here as always. Yes, it's good to have the Nor back. All right, Rook, go ahead. Yeah, before we start, uh, I want to be clear about why we're doing the show. Uh, we're competitive. Uh, oh, Vixen, it looks like uh, there's some wow. trouble hearing you there. Get that. Uh, we'll get another check on that here in just a second. Um, Certainly we're competitive, thus we want to uh, research potential allies and the competition. As a viewer, you might be interested in those same things, or you may be looking for a guild to join. Uh, there are about to be a ton of guild ads up on forums now that the release date is known. Who should you join? Who should you ally with? What are the common issues faced by guilds awaiting the launch of Tesso? Uh, maybe you're interested in a small guild that's still developing where you can make a big difference and maybe become guild leader one day. Or maybe you want to be part of a group that has most of the core needs covered so that you can pick and choose what to help with. It's a very personal choice, that's for sure. The uh, All right, let's have a fun, little fun before we uh, get to know our guests better. And uh, we have a few fun Tesla trivia questions we want you to answer. They are multiple choice, but we encourage you to come up with a unique response if you'd like. So let's start with DeLeatheris. I have a fun question for you. Listen. Our all right, so this is for all those lore people out there that have a good oh. sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the best way to win a date with a lusty Argonian maid? A, ask her to polish your enchanted spear. B, use your alchemy skills to whip up a love potion. C, let her know it's not the size of the tail that matters, it's how you use it. Or D, offer her a loaf of bread. Well, actually, being a, a Bosmer archer, I would have to uh, say that the best thing to do would be to show her an arrow and uh, ask her to touch the shaft, but I'd have to make sure it's not broken like this one. Um, let's uh, proceed with uh, Alistair. Uh, we've got, oh, a Dramora Lord and a Khajiit Skuma Dealer walk into a bar. The Dramora Lord looks to the Khajiit and says, You returned, foolish mortal. You have one chance to order me my favorite drink, or else I will feast on your heart. 
The Khajiit orders the Dramora Lord what? A. Sex on the beach. B. Double distilled skooma in a shot glass. C. Mead mojito. Or D. A virgin daiquiri. Wow. I, I you know I'm. I'm at a loss of words here. I don't know what to say, but <laughs> honestly, you know, being a Khajiit, it wouldn't matter because as soon as he got out of the tavern, you know, I'd be there with my sword waiting. And he would become a rug. <laughs> He'd become a rug. There you go. Yeah, I know. It's like when you have no perspective of life, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Very good. All right, next question is for Swamp Fox. After doing a strange summoning ritual involving matching bed sheets and pillowcases and shaving a cat, you are granted the Wabbage Duck. One afternoon, your wife asks you to pause your game and clean the house. You casually wave the Wabbage Duck in your wife's general direction, and poof, she turns into A, a sweet roll, B, a cute little bunny rabbit, C, a lusty Argonian maid, or D, a fountain of symptoms, which you use to buy the other three choices. Just, just, just one moment. I thought I was dating the Argonian lusty maid. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, apparently it, other it people are... It doesn't count when it's just you talking, man. She's moved on. <laughs> moved on. <laughs> Sorry, Dee, she's it. mine. Damn it. <laughs> she's mine. All mine. And she's for the pact. You can play with that I'll tail be... all you want, mate. I'm it going for the wizard, So it's a date. Got to be the wizard. There you go. Uh, so, good job, guys. Uh, now let's get to actually know each of you and your guilds a bit better. Uh, what makes your guild special? Um, the uh, the community, certainly for legend gaming. Uh, Alistair, you've got... Uh, your guild is called Volkendine, but you're actually part of a bigger community. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, Volkendine is a chapter of legend gaming. We are... Um, We've been around for about six years, and uh, we have been, you know, playing a lot of games. Started in Age of Con, uh, and you know, moved through a lot of other games, and now we have uh, four active chapters at the moment. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online is, uh, from, you know, Valkendine, and then we have Guild for EverQuest Next, uh, Word of Darkness, and uh, Wildstar as well. So, what would you say whole. is uh, where do you have the most members at the moment then? Right now, I think Valkendine is the biggest, but the second close second is uh, Terminus, which is for Wildstar. Both, you know, are coming out this year, so there's a lot of hype, especially after, uh, you know, Wildstar re released a bunch of uh, class information about their game and, and other stuff. So um, those are the two big ones, but Valkendine is, is leading so far uh, in terms of amount of members. Uh, some, some overlap, too, because if you're a member of Legend Gaming, you can join any chapter. Uh, you don't need to kind of reapply to another guild. You know, if you're in, you're in. Um, so there are some members who are part of, you know, multiple chapters. But um, Buck and Dine is the one with uh, the most right now. Okay, now you say members can join multiple chapters within Legend Gaming, so they can be part of different guilds. Is there any requirement? Like, do they have to go a certain number? They need to be a full member. There, there's, a, there's a trial period uh, when you join, which lasts uh, a month tops. Which is basically, you know, you getting to know us and, you know, the officers and the membership getting to know you. Um, and then after the trial period is over, they get to um, choose if they want to stay on that chapter only, which is, mo you know, what most people do, uh, or if they want to join another chapter. Um, obviously, if they join multiple chapters, they need to, um, they need to be able to um, meet the activity requirements for all the chapters, right? I mean, um, that's easy in pre-launch because all we have is the forums, but after the game is out, then you have to play both games, and you know, um, any MMO right. experienced player is gonna know that that's not always easy. So that's why you know most people are in like one or two chapters at a given time. But you have some crazy people who are gonna be on all of our chapters, you know, <laughs> playing all the games and um, and participating and rating a lot of them, you know. So uh, it, it really comes comes to what people can actually do with their time and and w what amount of time they're. Um, willing to invest in the community and in games in general. So, so. Okay. And, I mean, you're, uh, you're calling us all the way from Brazil. Is your guild based in Brazil? No, no. Uh, it's uh, U.S. Eastern Time is the, the main time zone for it. And uh, the, most of the members are in the U.S. We, we do have, like, a third of Vakandani is European, I think, um, from several parts of Europe. 
um, but most of the people are from the east coast of the U.S. And I, I'm actually the I was actually the only Brazilian in the community up until a week ago when another one joined. Um, but um, yeah, it's just a I, I'm an exception. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and uh, did you start this new faction within Legend Gaming? No, no. Uh, this chapter was started by Draw, which is also the community manager for Legend Gaming. So he's the community manager and the guild leader of Akendai. Um Since he's an Inner Sanctum member, which is you know the top rank you can have in the community, he gets to start you know a chapter, uh, and uh, he has no minimum amount of people that he needs, so it's it's easier for him. So he started about a year ago, um, and. Um, uh, I was uh, playing Star Wars at the time. We still had a chapter back in Star Wars called uh, Gen Jedi. It was shut out, shut down uh, some time ago. But um, I was a recruitment officer over there, so I got excited about Elder Scrolls, and and I was one of the first members. You know, as soon as Valkandine was live, I was there as a member, and um, and he chose me to be the recruitment officer. Okay. Um, now, how does that work in terms of like? Could I join Vokendine and then, or sorry, Legend Gaming, and say I want to start up a chapter for Rust? I'm going to go play Rust. I'm going to go hardcore and do all this stuff. It's going to be amazing. Give me a chapter. Oh yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, you you need to be at least uh, six months old in the community to start that. Um, okay. We don't we don't let people um, you know be officers or anything if they don't have that kind of, especially a guild leader, chapter leader. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have to have good standing with the community and, um, you know, have some leadership skills. But basically all you have to do is kind of write your case, right? You go and you um, you write about Rust, you list the features that, that the game has, you know, why it's fun, why people should be excited about it. And then there is an intersexual meeting. You've got to present your, your proposal of a chapter. Um, to the Inner Sanctum and say, hey, Inner Sanctum, I want to start a chapter. You know, I think the lore of our guild should be this and that way. We're going to have this kind of mood in the community, and I think we can, you know, grow with this game and have people, and, you know, I have friends that are interested. You know, whatever it is, you present your case, the Inner Sanctum will approve or not. Uh, but if, if they approve, then, you know, the web team of Legend Gaming is going to develop a section in the forums for, for you. It's going to... Uh, you know, channels for the chapter are going to be created in our uh, Ventrilo server, and uh, we're going to, you know, the web team is also going to make a, a pretty website. We're going to provide the code of conduct of Legend Gaming so that, you know, people can use it to start recruiting, and that's it, you know, but pretty much anybody with a decent, you know, amount of reputation in the community and the skills to do so uh, that is able to convince the Inner Sanctum that going to that game is a good thing to do for Legend Gaming, he can start a chapter, you know, it's open. Okay. Okay. Uh, now you're. I've seen Road, uh, one of your uh, members of Legend Gaming. He's been on the uh, SO Alliance podcast. So you guys are Ebonheart. They're mostly Aldmeri. Are you guys allied with them in any way, or do you have allies going into this game? Um. You mean on Tuesday cast? You mean well, Road is is in the guild, and then you have we have only uh, Ryan, which is Aldmeri on. on um, it's okay. me, it's Sari, and Road. We're both on Bakundai. Uh, we're both in Bakundai. So, um, yeah, it's mostly Ebonheart on the show. Yep. But uh, we try to really not, you know, be biased or anything except on our funny comments. Cause, you know, <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, the Alesso <laughs> SO Alliance podcast was with uh, uh, Tropos and uh, Shoddycast and um, uh Quest Gaming Network and stuff, so that's one where he was on there as a guest, but I guess oh, yeah. obviously not allied with them because they're Aldmeri, or do you have other allies that you're going into the game with? What are you doing for that? Yeah, for, for now, we don't have any formal allies. Obviously, you know, we have guilds we know, and, and people who you know come to our forums, and, and the people that you know, Road uh, talk to on that podcast are also, you know, friends and everything, and uh, we're trying to keep you know, keep tabs on each other and see what you know, what the guild's doing, how they're doing, and how they're growing. Uh, we're certainly going to try to be on the same campaign of those, you know, of those big guilds uh, and the guilds that are, uh, you know, organized, so that we can have some, you know, healthy competition and organize things in Cyrodiil. You know, that's that's our hope, okay. right? But uh, right now, the diplomacy department, which is a department that we normally have in our in our communities, is not up yet. So you know, many formal requests are directed to the guild leader, which is Draw. Um, and you know, so far we have had some 
some talk going on, but we don't have any formal allies in it. We, we're kind of um, very conservative in that in that regard as Legend Gaming because you know we have had some experiences in the past with uh, allying with guilds before the game launches. Um, so we, we kind of try to do that really close in an open beta or after launch. But yeah, we certainly plan on having a lot of you know allies and certainly enemies. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good. I mean, but, uh, part of the BB. For sure, for sure. Uh, D or Swamp Fox or Vixen, did you have any questions for Alistair at this time? No, I think he covered a lot. It's a very interesting guild. Definitely so. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, hopefully we might meet up in the same campaign and have some fun with each other. It's, uh, it's oh, good yeah, to do for so. sure. That sounds yeah. good. Well, I'll get uh, Vixen to question D here about He's got a, a very different structure. So we've talked about uh, Legend Gaming being a multi-gaming community that uh, covers a variety of games. They've got their inner sanctum. They've got uh, guild leaders that take on various chapters, how the guild leader takes on all the roles until they find enough officers and members to take on things like Alistar as a recruitment officer. And uh, so it's a very different setup, very organized. And I can attest to that with the contest. They competed against Unreal Aussie, who has 1,400 members in their community. And it was a tie in the end. I'll announce more about that later. But, but it was incredible how motivated uh, both these guilds were in, in taking on this contest and we're talking about it was a split of like one vote between the two guilds I'm not doing a recount it was too many votes and so it's a tie it was uh, it was impressive to see how uh, motivated these guilds were so but uh, let's talk about the Nor, one of the best uh, uh, Aldmeri guilds that we know out there yeah so D tell us about your famous Nor. alrighty thank you um, Basically, we are not an offshoot of an existing gaming group. Uh, we were formed specifically on Tamriel Foundry, given props to them, and Atropos for all of his work, and, uh, and his gang, obviously, that, uh, that support that whole website. Um, started off literally just, uh, just making a very small post on there, and I was uh, hoping maybe to get a dozen members uh, together, maybe two dozen, before the game starts. Uh, we right now have over 600 members. So we've had to, I've had to rethink a little bit as to uh, as to how we're going to work this. And typically, what happens for uh, for kind of like give a little bit of a background. I've been uh, playing MMOs for 17 years now, ever since Ultima Online originally came out. I've been in small guilds, medium guilds, large guilds, run solo. I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and all the drama involved. Typically, what happens with a large guild because that that is now what we are is you start off, it's kind of like it's based upon the triangle philosophy. And what that is, is it's a top-down structure where you have, your, you have your leaders at the top, which is right here. Then you have your kind of like your, your medium leaders and your inner sanctum and council members and everything. Then you have your squad leaders. And then basically down here in yellow, you have all your peons. And in a large guild, basically, they just run around and do whatever they're told and asked to, and, uh, and that's how it goes. Well, we're a little bit different. We're pointy-eared elves, and so we're tree huggers. And so, <laughs> but, but beware that our trees are very sharp and spiky, and we can give you a lot of damage. And so based upon this theory, instead of going with that very simplistic model, which is great for... Uh, simple-minded orcs and nords and everything like that. <laughs> we're, we're taking the theory of going with a circle. And what that circle is, will take a little bit of explaining, but as you saw, the yellow was down at the bottom on the, uh, on the triangle, which is the traditional top-down membership. Mm -hmm. our, members, our, our members are here, and they actually they vote as to who is the member of each squad. Three of these squads are uh, connected, and they vote who is in charge of their three, and then three of these form up the larger one. We will be fielding approximately 100 members. There won't always be, obviously, all 100 members online at any one time, and so we have kind of like what we call the Himbar Pilim, which translates into glue. And these are people who can perhaps, due to family uh, constraints or just uh, other issues, Maybe they can only play four or six hours a week. We don't mind. We welcome you. As a matter of fact, we want you to join us. Because what that means is, is when an eight-man squad might be short, two or three people, you can just fill in 
and everybody's on the same page and, uh, and away you go. Yeah, I love the idea of your tree concept and that played a role in the way you guys came up with your name now, didn't it? It did indeed. As a matter of fact, we wanted to distinguish ourselves. Everybody says they're original, everybody says our guild's the best and, and we're different and everything like that. But we wanted to, the Nor basically from a, an elven translation using an online translator is the only thing I did. It means the clan. I wanted to make sure that we're not just a guild, but that we are indeed a community that supports itself. Going back to, to the picture of the tree, the important thing about it is, is you'll notice that, that the top branches are all interwoven with the, with the trunk and with the roots, and there's no one, one individual part that sticks out. It all, it all has to work together and combine together as a community. We have set up on our website, and I can't get into it too much right now because it would just take too long, but we have basically four separate divisions, and those divisions will, will handle the different hours of the 24-hour clock, so there are four eight-hour time frames. So instead of putting somebody in the West Coast into a West Coast kind of like squad, what if they play at 4 a.m. and none of his other members are on? So what we have is we actually have a little calculator on our website where you will press on the part of the world that you live in and then what local gaming time you play on and it will tell you which of those four quadrants, time quadrants, you should join. We oh, wow. definitely expect to have a 24-7 uh, presence in, uh, in Cyrodiil so that literally if, uh, if somebody takes some of our keeps during one time of the day, we'll just come back and hammer them all the harder... Uh, when everybody else is on. It's not any problem at all. We do have members in, uh, we're proud to say, although we're a brand new uh, guild, we've been around, I guess, for a year since we started on Tamriel Foundry, we have members in 62 different countries. So uh, you guys you guys that are East Coast guilds better, better get used to taking some coffee and staying awake a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And Dee, do you guys have any alliances with other guilds, or you guys cover it with your members? We, we basically hope to be covered with our members. We don't know yet exactly how many people are going to be able to join on one side in the campaign. Uh, what we do encourage is our system, because if I go back to this, if I can find it, the earlier diagram right here, we've actually had small guilds, these little yellow segments represent eight-man teams. We've actually had small eight-man guilds join us. We had one join us from Sweden. And within that eight-man guild, they, join, they vote who is going to be their leader within that. It's not dictated from the top down. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate as much as possible. You'll never completely get rid of it in a large guild. But we're trying to eliminate kind of like the cronyism, the favoritism of sucking up to the guild leader or the guy above you. Uh, you can actually bring uh, and join us with a, an eight-man, 16-man, 24-man guild and be officers, you know, relatively, relatively fast. We have not decided who's going to be leading like the larger squads until actually the game launches. The same with the uh, crafts, uh, crafting, because we want to make sure everybody has a fair chance, and that the person who is best qualified, not the person who's been with us the longest or is buddies with the guild leader, gets the job. And that way, the guild itself, or the clan as we prefer to call it, is best served and it best serves the community. So how do you decide who's best qualified there, Dee? We decide who's best qualified basically upon merit. Okay. I mean, if somebody, uh, if you, uh, on, on the basic level of that eight-man squad, as that eight-man squad runs around, You'll typically have people who are decision makers and you'll have people who are happy to play uh, other roles, whether it's support or healing or tank or whatever the case might be. Typically, a, a natural leader normally rises to the top. And we, we don't even mind if you want to rotate that between all eight of you on a weekly or every two weeks or a monthly basis. It's, it's all about whatever you have fun with. You also get to choose the, eight pe the other seven people of that eight-man squad that you play with. And so you're not kind of like, if you join us as a large guild, you're not going to be thrown into kind of like some little squad where you hate everybody because they all have a, even a different philosophy of life or a, a different game style or a different choice of music playing in the background. We've actually, uh, through this system, uh, some of our members have formed actually truly amazing friendships. It's, uh, it, it really works nicely. 
So uh, I've got a question here in Twitch that uh, delivers. How are you going to incorporate this into the SO guild positions? Like most MMOs, uh, I assume it requires that top-down structure. Interesting. That's from I, Asia. I need a little bit of a clarification from that because again, what happens is is we're we're not top-down. We're kind of like again, we're from the middle out. But this green circle outside here. For want of a better word, that doesn't so much represent guild leadership, which is here in the blues. Mm -hmm. This represents administration, which is what I'm a part of, although technically I'm the guild leader. I kind of like, like to think of myself as the facilitator. Sure. I, uh, it's, it's putting this, this structure together so that the community as a whole can have fun and enjoy itself. And... Uh so I guess that question might be from again from Asha. They're wondering if uh, so. Say the guild structure in the game has a, a typical guild leader, officer, member, recruit structure, something like that. Um, does that affect your plan at the moment, or can you work within that? No, not any, not not any way in the least. On our on our website, actually, we have the whole full, uh, we have the full whole. Uh, Whole full structure or full whole structure already mapped and planned out. Uh, those uh, those squads are already being uh, formed. Uh, nobody's kind of like taking the leadership role yet, as I say, because that'll be voted first within the eight-man teams, then within the greater whole of the 24 for the next level up for the next leader, and then the whole hundred-man team will vote for the overall leader of that of that squad. So. Um, I would like to see Elder Scrolls Online have at least, you know, 10 guild ranks uh, available. But if they don't, and it's some kind of like pared down system, we're more than capable of handling it. That's not any problem whatsoever. A lot of this is done internally on our website. Sure. Okay. Alistair, you have a question? I, um, I have a question, yeah. Uh, and, and actually, it's not a question, more of a statement. Uh, you mentioned, you know, we don't want, we don't want the fav favoritism and, uh, and uh, you know, People to feel excluded and everything, and, uh, and you said that that's why I have the structure. But I I don't see that this structure is needed to eliminate that in any way. I mean, uh, this is something Legend Game has been doing for about six years uh, right now, and I think it's more about the maturity uh, of the officers and the membership, you know, and experience with leadership and all of that. I mean, if if you have things uh, trimmed down, explained to everybody as soon as they join, and reinforced through, you know events and friendship and, you know, just having fun with the guild, I think, um, you know, you, you achieve that just fine. Um, so I, I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, a lot, of, um, a lot of what he said is exactly what, you know, a lot of guilds are trying to achieve out there. Um, and uh, some of them have achieved. Uh, but I, I don't think that structure is necessarily, you know, needed. Uh, and and I, I was also, and my, my question is, I was also wondering... What happens with those eight-man squads if, you know, like three of them stop laying or something? Do you guys have, like, a replacement system, or how, how does that work? Because I'm, I'm curious. I never saw this structure before, so I'm just uh, trying to understand it better. No, absolutely, and, and I will agree with you. I mean, it's not kind of like all this is is an alternative. It doesn't mean that structures that are top-down kind of like uh, will have unfriendly situations, you know, all the time or anything. You know, don't, uh, don't misunderstand it. This is the best concept that I've come up with for players who, who join a guild right off the bat. They can literally, uh, we've had uh, one guy who joined just on the website uh, probably about a month ago. He's actually he's a, an ex-SEAL uh, uh, member from, uh, I forget which SEAL team it was, but his leadership qualities uh, stood out straight away. And basically the, the membership not the, not the leaders, not the council or forum or whatever it was, but the members said, wow, this is somebody that we would love to have leading one of our groups. And so potentially, obviously, he's going to be in that role. So, you know, there isn't like a, a three-month or a six-month stipulation or whatever. We want the best person in that situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, the best person for the job is the only person that should do it. Uh, you know, I, I agree with that com completely because, you know, for example, right now, and then Valken Dying, we don't have the PvP and PvE departments up yet. Because, yes. you know, like, there's no way to know who's going to be a good PvP or a good PvE. I mean, people have experiences, right, from previous games, but 
uh, and to show what you can do in the game, uh, it, it's very important uh, to hold that because 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 you also want to give everybody a fair chance. So I think we totally agree on that point. And you know, my first vice officer uh, of recruitment that I chose to help me with the interviews and all the uh, all the advertising, you know, that recruitment is involved on. He was, uh, I think, he had just become a full member, and he was in the guild for like three weeks. And you know, we're like, "You're a full member." And then I'm like, "I need a vice officer." He sent me and say, "Hey, I'll start. I want to be a vice officer." I'm like, "Just do it." You know, just had an interview with him, and I, I, you know, draw is like that, which is the guild leader. And I'm also picking up that kind, that kind of trend, which is, I just give you the job, and you show me what you can do. You know, and um, I, I don't care about seniority. You know. But, People don't have to be six months in, in YouTube. In, in a large guild, I agree with you. That's that's very essential because the guild leader basically can't handle everything. Um, exactly. Addressing your uh, your question earlier of what happens if three people leave, well, basically, what can that, you know? That's that's a very realistic thing, and never will you have, or very rarely will you have, all eight members of that one squad perhaps online at the same time, and that's where the people that maybe only again play four or six hours a week come in. And fill in those spots until permanent spots have been filled in by the uh, by that squad. We actually we have different names for them. They're kind of like based upon a, an arrow, like a, a Fletcher shaft and, a, and an arrowhead that makes it up. But uh, again, you'll be able to read about that if you visit our website right here. <laughs> okay, and that says the nor.com, and I see that was asked actually in the Twitch channel there. Uh, Zor. Zoro Arc 173 uh, Deleathers, is there some sort of text article on your website I can check for more information? Um, there is indeed. We, of command thing. we have the whole chain of command written up there. We have the explanation and the philosophy of it uh, all. We have codes of conduct, expectations of our members, and then also what we expect of the different roles of each member as well. Um, we really, we, we kind of like, you know, our basic member, as I say, Rather, rather than viewing them as being down at the bottom and just joined, our basic member is the very core of, of our whole community. And so, you know, we welcome anybody that, uh, that is looking at playing Elder Mary uh, Dominion, whether it's an individual or perhaps three, four, five, six people who, uh, who might be looking at forming a small guild or already are a small guild, even medium guild for that matter, come and join us. Um, we literally, um, let, let's put it this way, we've known from official videos released by Elder Scrolls Online that there are keeps and there are three resources around a keep. Uh, the premise here is that if you have a hundred man team on during a, a particular you know, time frame, one of those uh, eight hour time segments that we were talking about, mm -hmm. that basically what would happen is, is that the, the 24 man team could all go to a keep all three uh, eight-man squads could each take one resource starting at exactly the same time, probably take that resource down within a matter of a couple of minutes, uh, precluding any reinforcements coming in, and then all 24 gather, uh, gather together in front of the keep and assault it. That in itself is fun, but now imagine that with a 100-man team, you have four of these groups, so you can actually be assaulting simultaneously four enemy keeps at the same time. The enemy won't know which way to turn around, which way to go. And again, I did have my uh, my props from uh, from video one, which I I wasn't going to uh, re-show here, but you can go back and watch the uh, the podcast from video one to see uh, see what our overall ultimate plan is for, uh, okay. for the enemy alliance. <laughs> I remember that well. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much, D. And uh, let's just uh, get into Swamp Fox a bit. Unfortunately, uh, video camera wasn't working there. We're going to uh, look at your lovely picture here and uh, and get on with this guild from Australia. Swamp Fox? Thanks, Rook. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, D a question about his guild and his structure. Um, I've always been used to um, a dictatorship, like a benevolent dictatorship in the guilds that I've been in since the, the late 90s, and I've found that they've, they've worked quite well. Um, I was just wondering how you um, you stop uh, an overthrow uh, in, the, um, in the, the middle part of the guild, because that's where it would probably happen. Just wondering um, if your comments on that. But basically, the it, it's kind of like it's self-governing 
for want, for want of a better word. I mean, anybody, technically, I could be overthrown. Um, I wouldn't want to. I certainly look upon myself as a benevolent dictator. <laughs> and, uh, and I think everybody that, uh, that is in the guild kind of like has good, good fun and, uh, and a good laugh with me. Yeah. But um, on any of those levels, basically, let's say somebody votes in from the coming back to this. If somebody votes in from down in, in the base member level, and they vote in a member, uh, a leader, for this uh, for the larger squad, and the guy ends up not being just not working out. Either he's not online enough, or everybody thought he was great, but actually uh, his tactics suck. Basically, he gets voted out and he gets replaced. It is a it is performance based. It's uh, you know I don't want to make any doubts about that. Um, but we're not expecting a large turnover again because. It's only people who are respected and are proven within the community that are going to be nominated and voted into the position in the first place. However, we're not going to be stuck in a situation if a leader kind of like starts being absent for one reason or another, playing another game or just had a baby or whatever the case, which all power to them. Real life comes first on that. Somebody else can step in and, uh, and fill those shoes. It's a very, it's a very dynamic situation. And should somebody uh, decide or, or the community as a whole decide that, hey, you know, we don't want that old English guy living out in California on an Indian reservation leading us anymore, I'll have to deal with that, you know? Does, doesn't, yeah. that, doesn't that create some kind of uh, excessive bureaucracy within, within the community? Because that's my view, at least. It's like you have people voting and then whenever somebody leaves it, they've got to vote again or... Uh, how, it, it, that's I, 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 I actually think that it minimizes it because because the again in the 17 years that uh, that I that I've been uh, PVPing and uh, and in guilds, people know right from the base level, you know who they would like to have as their leader and who they wouldn't, who's competent and who isn't, and so the vote for for want of a better word is is more of a of a formality, like. I don't need to get involved if an eight-man squad wants to elect a new leader. What, uh, there's no, no, bureaucracy, no bureaucracy involved. They decide it amongst themselves. So actually what happens is, is conversely, it reduces the bureaucracy for the leadership of the guild so that the leadership of the guild can focus on the important stuff, which is like, you know, how to improve the guild economy, how to win the strategy in, uh, in Cyrodiil, whether we take these keeps or that keeps or whatever the case might be. All right. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with um, uh, what Alistair was saying um, about demonstrated ability being the important factor in uh, promotion. Um, obviously, you've also got to have um, a certain level of tolerance, especially with the broad range of gamers these days um, from all sorts of countries. Uh, you've got to respect everybody sort of background, culture, etc. And that's where it's sometimes very hard. Um, yeah, but I found that um, you, you, your guild structure is very interesting. I've never seen anything like that, and I've been playing games probably about the same time as you, since Ultima Online started about 97. So, um, ba ba yeah, interesting. What, yeah, basically uh, what it's based upon is like, for example, we have quite a number of Brazilians, and they've all formed their own little group. And so they're not kind of like, for want of a better word, it's not so much forced, but they now have the benefit of having more fun of being and playing with like-minded people. We have people from India, we have people from Sweden, Norway, Denmark, England, Germany, it's, uh, you know, Spain, Costa Rica, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Like, we've even got, I think, from Djibouti in Africa, and he's teamed up with somebody else as well, and just, just how it's coming together. To give a little bit of a background, although it wasn't exactly the same as this, I used to manage a, a, a company in real life that had over 200 employees. And uh, I instilled a, a similar system, which was quite a shock to the, to the owner of the company. And he kind of like thought the, uh, the company was going to go under. But in fact, uh, it realized better profits. And so there's, there's a translation of kind of like having trust in the community as a whole and how it functions and basically handing over and delegating a lot of responsibility for self-accountability and how they conduct themselves. Now you might have a bunch of hardcore gamers, they'll form their own eight-man squad. 
There might be a bunch of people who are more casual. They'll form another eight. You might have eight that just like to listen to, to hard rock and somebody else wants to listen to, I don't know, Enya. They'll form a different eight person squad. And the beauty is, is, is on our website is you can chat and talk to the different people and through that socializing, you as a member choose who you want to play with and run with not rather that you put in or that hey everybody's online we're a big zerg all 200 of us let's go to this keep over there but uh, we, we're going to be able to uh, trust me we're going to be able to do some phenomenal stuff regarding uh, organized tactics uh, uh, coordinated tactics at the same time in different parts of the map at the same time that we hope will be a lot of fun for our opponents and not have them leaving yeah, you know, it's just uh, when you mention the Brazilian squad and everything, I, I get that, but it's just that it seems to me that, you know, I've been around for quite a while as well and playing some games and being in several guilds. Um, it seems to me that it's just as easy for this uh, squad to play with everybody and socialize and be friendly as it is for them to decide to form their own guild and just leave. You know, that's 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 the kind of clickish problem that I see here. and and. Um, it's that is why this structure is so different for me because honestly, uh, you know, when, when you go into gaming environments, it's great to have trust in everybody, you know, and it, we try to do that in Legend Gaming. We do that through, you know, a <laughs> solid application process and everything. But when you when you, you want to give people too much trust in the internet, things normally go wrong. And that's my I'm going to cut things off here. We have to move the show along. Thank you very much, though, for that uh, very interesting and, and a lot of debate there. One later. We will, we will. <laughs> but uh, but Swamp Fox, uh, I'm afraid, sorry, I was muted there earlier uh, when I was coughing, but uh, I do want to find out about your guild a bit. Uh, I know you're from Australia. Uh, we know your guild is based there, and that uh, eventually you might be accepting members from other areas, but you're trying to work on that. But you have some interesting roots. You are from uh, a famous guild called the Syndicate, and I think it's important for people to know that uh, that ki those kind of roots they mean something. That um, you've got that that guild was actually in the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest guild around, so they certainly have some things going for them. Tell us a little bit about that and your history, and then tell us about uh, your new guild. Thanks, Rook. Uh, yeah, I started in about 97 playing un Ultima Online, and I, I got into a guild called uh, Guardians of Light on the Pacific Shard, um, and that was okay. And I thought, well, they seem to be interested in um, numbers um, more than playing the game. But then again, I was only a crafter at the time, so... Um, I started looking up on the website uh, uo.com and it had guild guild numbers and the Pacific Shard had the Guildian, Guardians of Light as the, being the top guild. And then I looked at the overall and I saw this group called the Syndicate and I thought, hmm, got to be a pack of gangsters. <laughs> and I could, that was my immediate thought. Um, so I kept, I kept playing with the the Pacific mob. So I went to uh, Siege Perilous, which was um, a, a bit of a harder uh, sort of a uh, uh, environment, and I kept looking at this syndicate, and they, they, they sort of interested me the way that they've they've formed over the years. And um, after well, Shadowbane and a few other sort of things, I, I finally joined them in 2008. Now that was not an easy task because. Um, that they they are very selective, and I, I when I when I got into the guild, I could see why. Um, very very uh, uh, similar personalities, uh, same values, same core um, uh, values and rules and stuff like that. And it's all decent people, and they are about five or six hundred people. Um, and uh, as far as their their um, leadership is concerned, they've had the the one guy uh, dragons has been the leader of that guild since 96 and up until this day and it's, it's like they get uh, nearly 200 people to a conference and they've had a conference running for uh, I think over 10 years uh, they do um, uh, write guides and they they, they do uh, charity um, and they're all a total total guild they're probably the, the biggest um, most professional guild I've ever struck and of course, leaving was a big decision. 
And of course, the only reason I actually left was because I wanted to start my own. Time zone, yes, no doubt a factor. Being in Australia, you sometimes only played with half a dozen people. Um, sure. But at least you had 24 7 with a guild like the Syndicate. Um, so um, I thought, well, I'm going to start uh, my own. Similar guidelines, um, a little bit different in the in the privacy sort of uh, stakes where uh, some some people can actually um, uh, submit information on a, on a forum or something like that. As long as it's a uh, properly moderated one, like Tamriel Foundry or Tiso uh, off the record, all those sort of ones uh, that are that are pretty uh, moderated properly um, and and make a point of view. Uh, we're not into the flame wars and all that sort of stuff. It just doesn't do anybody any good. But uh, I just, just decided to develop a um, website, uh, and I've, just, I've, I've actually just started it, actually. It's only around about oh, half a dozen members at the moment, but I've got another six or seven looking at joining. So it's a, it's a fresh start guild. But the experience I've had over the, all those years has is, is, um, made me look at uh, what's required, um, and of course, I've always been a great believer in your members are your greatest asset, um, and you, you, you've got to you've got to point the direction uh, and be active and 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 make focus and and keep everybody sort of happy and entertained because after all, it is entertainment games that we play, and that's about um, where I'm at at the moment. Nice, nice. So, what are some of the obstacles you face when starting a new guild? I mean, that's something where. Um, a few of us are going through as guilds, and there's going to be a lot of people going through the same kind of stuff that are trying to create new guilds. What are you uh, well, I've seen, working on? I've seen um, a lot of guilds make the mistake of looking at, oh, we've got no numbers. So they make an open recruiting policy. Mm. Now, that's probably the worst thing you can do because you're not getting any uh, screening at all. And you can sometimes find that uh, the guild implodes after a very short time and becomes vapour. Uh, now, you, you, you're not only going to lose the ones you wanted to in the first place, you're going to lose the people that mattered. So you've got to put a restriction on um, uh, or a screen on the type of people you want. Um, age limit may be... I actually dropped my age limit from 21 to, to, to 18 for mm -hmm. the simple reason, being an old bugger, I found that young people today are just so much maturer, a bit more intelligent than when I was a teenager. And that's oh. one of the reasons. Oh, that's awesome. That Now, you've declared for Ebonheart. What, uh, are you work, doing that? Like I know Always. Unreal Aussies was with us uh, the one weekend. They might be going Ebonheart. Uh, why wouldn't you have just joined Unreal Aussies? No, I wanted to do my own thing. I thought it was important with all the knowledge that I've, I've gained okay. um, that that I, I thought, well, there's a... Obviously, Unreal Aussies is, is probably a really good guild and they're going to do their, their own thing. Like Alistair's Guild, for instance, is, is a, a multi-gaming guild where you've got different branches. We're a long way from that yet. I call myself a, a multi-gaming guild uh, as well, but um, you've, got to, you've got to be able to walk the walk um, after you've, you've gained enough members to to distribute it between different games. I think we'll be just concentrating for the first couple of years with the Elder Scrolls Online. Cool. That's awesome. The um, Now, I just wanted to say, uh, I mean, a lot of new guilds are created for every game. There's a ton of uh, first-time guilds going into this game, and there's a lot of common guild concerns. Um, uh, in Mostly Harmless, you often hear us say, great people make good games amazing. And uh, so there's certainly lots of things that we'd like to talk about there. Uh, actually, we don't have anybody here for Daggerfall Covenant except for uh, for Vixen and I from Mostly Harmless. So I should just say something for our guild. Uh, we <laughs> almost skipped us. Uh, so <laughs> I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Daggerfall Covenant uh, Guild. We've got uh, Evanhard faction, of course, with uh, Alistair and uh, from Volkendine and uh, Swamp. Fox with uh, Owl and uh, Owl Wolf Legion, um, and of course uh, D from the Nor. So we are the other faction uh, that's out there. The poll suggests, and this is why we picked this, was that it was going to be drawing a more 
mature audience just because of the way the games come out for older Elder Scrolls. Um, there's some other polls that we'll talk about later in the cast, and that also led us to go for Daggerfall Covenant. Uh, and also, they're the least popular, so we want to be the underdogs and be able to, if we win, we don't want it to just to be said, oh, you were Ebonheart, everybody's rolling Ebonheart, it's no big deal, you just had more people. Uh, so if we, uh, we're competitive and if we win, we want it to be because we're more organized. Um, certainly for us, we have the typical, uh, or more typical structure, but pretty open. There's council officers and members, but to that extent, I mean, we had a member join just uh, last week. He immediately stepped up. He said, what can I do to help? I said, well, we need help with recruitment. And he immediately stepped up, did some stuff, and he's won a prize now as is featured in a player spotlight, uh, or about to be, along with some other people. So it doesn't matter about the length of time. It's like D said, it's about merit. Um, we had a Hawken night on Friday night. So some people are saying they don't have their PvP departments developed yet. Ours is in full swing. Kodiak does our uh, Planet Side 2 nights where we get into our main big raid and how to practice that. Uh, so if you hear us talk about a particular game, we're usually talking about, we'll say Planet Side 2 and what's going on in that. And then uh, Hawken, uh, I like to use for developing small squad action to get people used to talking to each other. And because you can do four to six man groups, uh, you have to have a lot of leaders. And uh, to be successful in a game like this with AVA, we've only got about seven or eight raid leaders at the moment. We consider that a small number. After this past Friday with the Hawken uh, night, there was two more people spotted immediately that was like, okay, you're stepping up the next... Uh, uh, sorry... You're going to step up in ESO when we get to play it and uh, and be leading raids in that as well. Um, we want to develop those people right away and make sure that they've got all the support they can get. Uh, basically, we'll just take a break. We'll be playing and we'll be like, ah, I'm taking a 15-minute break. You're in charge. This is what you're doing. Good luck. And we'll throw them into it <laughs> and get them going. I uh, feel it's very important to develop uh, new people. Um, uh, Kodiak's in charge of most of the uh, the PvP and stuff, and, and I assist with the coaching and training because uh, I train air traffic controllers, and it's it's a lot of similarities uh, with it. So uh, a lot of fun in, in terms of the job and then the hobby. Um, Vix, oh, and we gave away uh, beer kits this last week from sponsors, too. That's just more fun than anything. I mean, uh, a, a lot of people uh, certainly like the prizes, but it's mostly just a good time that uh, um, we gave that out for the, the Hawk and Night there yesterday. So, uh, Vixen, anything you'd add about, uh, about uh, Mostly Harmless? Um, just that we have a great group of people. Everybody step up, steps up. It's amazing how many of our members have just volunteered to take over and lead a bunch of different things, and we're just really lucky. And even they let me lead, which, I mean, that says something if they let me like, raid lead. So <laughs> we remember, have a great group of people. <laughs> I remember her first night in Hawk, and, and it's like, uh, it's her first night, and she just outscored all of us. <laughs> how are we going to live this down <laughs> and we haven't since <laughs> and uh, Queensley's going to step up and do some leading and Cammy was the other day and uh, yeah we got a lot of people stepping up male or female to do raid leading and uh, we're supportive that way so uh, Gas Mask I mean he uh, just joined our group he was number one in Guild Wars on his server for arena combat so he's got lots of PvP experience uh, he was in the uh, alpha and everything for Guild Wars 2 he's got tons of testing experience in a game they were part of a 40-man group that was just testing the PvP and trying to find the balance issues. He came into the Hawken Knight, never having played it before, and was immediately helping to coach some other members that were having difficulty with just some basic, you know, line of sight stuff and, and very gently coaching them. Okay, yeah, you move back this way. Yeah, just a bit to your right, to your right. And that's the kind of people we want. Uh, skill is great, but good attitude and trainable, even better. So uh, uh, certainly Daggerfall seems to have a mature group. Uh, we'll talk about the polls that suggest that Dee's going to have a bunch of Khajiits, Nightblades, wielding bows, and no healers <laughs> in a minute and have some fun there. But uh, but don't want to make the show about uh, us. We're certainly very happy with the the guests that we have here, but uh, but we're the only Daggerfall one that came out for this one. So, um, so that's one of the Daggerfall guilds you can choose. Anyways, um, for you guys, for a question, do you all have, uh, I think you, you hit on this there, uh, Barry, a bit, having recruitment standards. How do you know if someone's a good fit for your guild? And if they're not a good fit, how do you determine that? And how do you remove them? Uh, maybe, Alistair, I could get you guys to speak on this first. You guys have got uh, some very uh, organized standards for that. Yeah, we start with the written application, normally with the recruitment. You know, the person has a few questions to answer about their gaming experience, just so it's like a, it's more of an introduction. 
uh, to them. And then, you know, other people got to greet them and see where they're coming from and everything. Uh, and then we schedule a Ventrilo interview or, you know, audio interview, and we talk to them a little bit. It's it's about an hour. And, and you know, the interview is more, it's a back and forward thing. It's not like we're asking them questions and they have to answer it like, oh, my God, it's like a job interview. It's more like just sit on vent. You know, normally when you get to the Ventrilo interview phase, you're almost in, you know, because uh, if your application uh, is kind of, you know, crappy, we're just going to deny it right there. Um, you know, and the, the, the recruitment officers determine that. You know, they look at it and say, well, this guy put some time to explain to us where he's coming from. So it shows that he cares about our rules, he cares about the community, he cares about being clear, he's a, you know, he's a social person, he wants to be part of the group, you know. But if somebody goes in there, all their answers are like one-liners or one-words, we just deny them because, you know, it's like he did the application in five minutes and uh, really, you know, if, he, if we're not worth his time, then he's not worth ours. That's normally how we go with it. Um, but then, you know, when you get to the interview where, you know, we explain the rules and how we work and what's the structure of Legend Gaming, you know, all the departments, you know, PV, PVP, crafting, um, all that, recruitment and activity. Um, and then we ask, you know, we basically put the person on the same page that we are. And that's, you know, and that's when we determine, you know, about their, you know, depending on their reactions on the interview and how they respond to our rules and what are the comments. We, we know if they're going to, you know, likely be a good fit or not, and that's how we judge. Sometimes there are some red flags that are raised there. You know, this guy, you know, he's a troll, or, you know, he, he has this personality where he doesn't respect any kind of, you know, authority. So if you don't respect the authority normally, you don't respect your fellow duties as well. So, you know, it, it's just a matter of time until it causes troubles. You know, so it, it, it's a it's a bunch of factor, obviously. It's very subjective. Um, you know, we, we kind of use this small process to test the person's social skills. Sure, it can sure. be part of the community. Right? Now, I see this question. Is this is Rem part of one of your guys there? Because he's saying an application will regularly have three to five pages full of greetings from other Legend Gaming members. He's saying that on the Twitch yeah. channel there. Is that, uh, now, does that mean that your, their applications are publicly visible or something? How does that work? Yeah, if you go to, to Legend Gaming forums right now and go to the Become a Legend section, which is the part where all the applications are posted for, all of our chapters, uh, y you see some Bakundai applications over there, and then as soon as the person posts the application, everybody can see them, you know, and then all the members okay. come and they read, and it's like, oh, welcome to the guild, you know, welcome to the forums, good luck with the application process, and it's like, you know, all, everybody's like, oh, I play this game as well, you know, it's really fun, and we, we kind of, you know, it's very important to us that people that come to our forums, and especially the people who apply, feel welcome, sure. you know, since the start. So, like, somebody posts an application, you can, I can guarantee you five minutes later, there, there will be a reply. Interesting. Uh, within five minutes, and because you know, we're very active over there. And, yep. um, and starts there, you know, we start to build up uh, the social feeling, feeling of the person. You know, you're part of a guild now, you're part of a community, and, you know, we want, you, we, we, we want to get to know you, we want to hang out with you, and uh, we want you to do the same with us, you know, to have that feeling of, I want to get to know these people and form friendships here and bonds that will last throughout games and throughout years, you know, because that's, that's the cool part about MMOs. It's, it's yeah. more yeah. than just the games, right? It's, it's about the, 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 the group of people you play with. So, sure. And, 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 and that, go ahead. Oh, I know, Swamp Fox, you said that you've got uh, standards and stuff, and D, for you guys, which, for Swamp Fox and D, do you guys have applications? How do you guys do it? Yeah, I have a 20, oh, it's about 18 to 20 uh, question um, application. Um, it gives people um, a chance to relax in the first few questions. I chuck in a couple of curly ones and stuff like that, just to <laughs> mainly screen people. But I agree with Alistair. Um, a lot of the a lot of the uh, recruitment um, is 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 based on what uh, the mutual benefit of both, uh, not just one way. Um, but in my case, uh, because the game hasn't come out yet, um, I'd be more uh, likely to to have a better screening process in the game itself, sure. where you're actually um, adventuring with people that that may fit your um, uh, criteria. Not everybody does, um, but they can still be a good person. They, they, they just don't uh, focus on um, uh, a certain part of the guild that you, you, you've got a, a rule against, like um, uh, cheating and all this sort of stuff. You know, yeah. Yeah. so you, you, you try and keep it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And D? 
Well, for me, it's uh, again, I kind of like I've pulled on uh, a little bit of my experience uh, from management of a, of a large company in real life, and uh, I no longer manage that company. But um, basically, I would find that during the interview process, whoever's uh, whoever's applying will always tell you whatever they want you to hear, and I could sometimes not tell who was going to be good or who wasn't. Somebody who who put in, for, for want of a better word, a crappy application might actually t end up being a star player and somebody who on paper just uh, in an application looked awesome uh, ends up being a complete washout. And so my philosophy has always been is hire them, see how they do for a couple of months and if they're not cutting it, uh, you know, you, you can them. Okay. And it's uh, it give, basically it gives everybody a fair chance. Not everybody has the same communication skills. Uh, perhaps English isn't their first language when they're uh, applying on a uh, on an application, and so they might uh, put down one word or two word answers. Um, you know, it's certainly an indication. But uh, we welcome everybody, but not everybody will stay, nor will everybody kind of like eventually be accepted as a member of the community. You do have to prove yourself, and it goes back to that uh, that part of uh, of where you have to kind of like it, it's based upon merit. It's based upon who you are as uh, as a person, upon your own character, how uh, whether you can play basically well with others is uh, is very very important. And again, you might find that you might play well with one group but not with another, which again is why we have the ability to choose the own people that you play with, so that at least you fit in with the, with the people that you can run with. Makes sense. Uh, and for Mostly Harmless, it's a uh, pretty typical application and then interview. Uh, I'll tell you right now, one of the interview questions uh, I often ask is, uh, if, actually, first of all, my HR officers uh, that Cammy and I have as counsel, uh, they, uh, and, and team actually, because there's a whole team of them now, they often schedule it, they make sure to schedule it when I'm not available. They're like, well, Rook's teaching karate tonight, let's, uh, let's have an interview so that he can just relax. And uh, I'm really pleased with that. I went away on vacation for two weeks and I had no worries in the world. I just uh, drank on a cruise ship and had a great time because uh, they all had everything handled uh, and do all the time. They really step up. But, uh, but if I happen to pop by for the interview, I tend to ask, uh, uh, you're leading a raid. There's eight of you in this small group. Um, two scenarios. One, four of them aren't moving around in the, uh, the way you would like them to. And then the other scenario, uh, just one person's not moving around in the way you would like to. How would you, you're leading the raid. What would you do? How would you coach in these two situations? And uh, uh, it's pretty simple, really. I mean, one's about identifying the fact that, okay, if it's a lot of people making a mistake, it's probably on me. If it's one person making a mistake, it's probably something that I can coach them on. And uh, we treat it like a professional sports team. Um, it's a coaching situation. You certainly want to chat with them and uh, and encourage them to, to do better. Often, you know, it's it's multiple languages. There's a lot of chatter going on, or they're drinking, or any number of things. So if it's a one-off, it's not a big deal. But if it's happening all the time, then maybe it's something that you can uh, work with them and train them. And uh, that's why we do our small group Hawken nights and Planet Side Two nights because we've got two very different opportunities to uh, to coach and develop our PvP team. And you see it uh, in Planet Side two when they go out that it's just immediately this person's in charge this person's watching the back uh, this person knows that they're going to set up uh, weapons each time like pretend like it's siege or something and uh, uh, so there's some unity in that and then we have a lot of guests that just uh, join us for those games from friends and uh, work with them because uh, they've got different styles too so um I ran off topic there. That was an interview question. <laughs> but we certainly want to make sure that we get good uh, quality people. And I think a lot of people think Mostly Harmless is, uh, we've heard some people say that it's big and they were uh, had said some things about that. I think we're at 70 or 90 members. Like we're not big. We just have really active members that uh, really contribute a lot. So I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have like six, you know, 40 or 50 active members than 150 not so active members, honestly. Yeah. Uh, we're at we're at 70 as well. It's like 74 right now. But it keeps changing because we have activity requirements. People fail trial periods and I kick them, you know. <laughs> sure. So there, there's always a, a, a variation. There, but yeah. yeah. And again, I fully agree with the numbers. I mean, we have, as I say, you know, 600 odd. But I think that uh, come game launch, we can probably only count on about 200. So, you yeah. know, those... 
those members that aren't active or you know signed up uh, with a guild just in order to try and get a beta invitation or something like that they're going to be cut you know it's uh, it's an unfortunate thing but uh you know we don't want uh, we don't want stragglers we don't want drama queens we don't want kind of like uh you know uh uh, for want of a better word, you know, attention hogs and everything like that. It's, uh, you know, you, you are better with kind of like quality versus quantity. Yeah. But if you can have lots of quality, so much the better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, good I point. Yeah, I, I think life, uh, the lifeblood of any guild is activity. Um, but it's important to, to have that information uh, portrayed at the interview um, or when you get to know them. So as at least they, they know that um, they're not going to get booted if they're just playing solo for a week. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, Communication is the key. I mean, if you're leading anything, I mean, if you're organizing anything, you have to be clear in your communication. You know, we have pages and pages of, you know, how we conduct things, what is expected of trial members, what is expect expected of full members. Our code of conduct is really long and complete and full of mm -hmm. rules, but it's really common sense laid out in a in a document. You know, there's nothing there's like you look at it and you're like, oh my god, I never saw you do this. It's just you know, internet common sense really, uh, MMO um, code of conduct. And um, but uh, yeah, what you said is just absolutely true. You just need to make sure everybody is on the same page when it comes to what is expected of them, um, because it's very common. Uh, the biggest source of drama is lack of communication. When you when you sit over the problems, they just grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, our our code of conduct is a maybe a page, but it can really be summed up, and it often is, is just uh, this is common sense. Be professional. Uh, we want to uh, attract and keep uh, you know good people. Like I mean, Vixen, you're a, you got a professional job. You do a lot of different things in life, in real life, and and help uh, in so many different ways. Um, we want more people like uh, Vixen that are professional, that uh, uh, react well in, in difficult situations and don't fly off the handle. So, yeah, I think recruiting. That's where recruiting the toon is um, is um, one of the, the problems and some guilds have uh, where they, they meet a specific requirement. I'd rather uh, recruit the person behind the toon, so therefore the, the, the character is either good or it's bad. Yeah, agreed. You know, we've had uh, again situations where you know you don't want somebody who's kind of like you know the best player out there and uh, can take on uh, six versus one in PvP and he wins, but uh, his his social skills are such that he disrupts the whole guild. You know, he's uh, you know I'd rather not have somebody like that to be quite honest with you than uh, than, than somebody who's uber and. Uh, and kind of like he's going to tear your guild apart, you know, with, with, you know, internal strife, drama and everything. And as much as we'd all like to avoid that, it will crop up from time to time. It's just the nature of the beast, any community, real life or online. Now, I see a few questions here. There's one from, I think it's Yavon. Uh, no one has to be dedicated to gathering, but it's quite common to have members that do want to craft and contribute by just gathering. Um, so that's that's an interesting point. Are you guys going to have defined roles for people that join? Uh, I know we take sort of a team approach, and we we're a PvP focused guild, but we want a few people that are really hardcore or very interested in crafting in the economy because it's important to our overall team composition. How do you guys approach that? Uh, for us here at the NOR, basically what we've done it's not online quite yet. Uh, we've got several different versions of it. We we kind of like quote at the workshop at the moment. Is we actually have a uh, it's a, it's an online program where basically different members of the guild can say, hey, I'm looking for 50 runes of this type, or I need X amount of ore, or so much of this birch wood, and they basically put in a requisition into this program, and other members can actually fill that requisition and when you put in that requisition you say I'm willing to give you 50 potions of health or a full set of medium armor or whatever the case might be and so it's kind of like it's 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 beyond what the guild store is it's something where people who are in need of stuff to further their own game enjoyment can put up and advertise what they're looking for and other people who enjoy fulfilling that part of the game can go out and gather and fill those requisitions. Cool. 
Um, I do have a question too for you guys about, or actually Vixen has a question here. Let me get uh, Vixen. Yeah, I, my question for you guys is with the guild banks, because now we know with ESO there's going to be multiple guilds that you guys can be in, and do you have any rules restricting your members um, to other guilds or, or people taking things from your bank? How does that work? Uh, Alistair? Is that for, for me? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, well, we're similar to the norm when it comes to craft, to organizing the crafting. Uh, the thing is, in Buck and Dying, the crafting department take, takes care of the uh, the guild bank as well. So basically, what we are, we focus on every aspect. So we have, you know, the crafting department is just going to be organizing activities for everybody to participate. So mostly, what what drives what the Buck and Dying members do is our events. You know, the the events we create. So we're going to have PvP events, PvP events, and we're going to have crafting events that a PvPer can participate, no problem, you know, so all you got to do is go in there and say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go on a crafting um, riot, you know, for, for the day, we're just going to go and craft as much and put it all in the guild bank and have fun while doing it, you know, maybe there will be some PvP on the way if it's a Cyrodiil, but uh, the way we work with guild bank, uh, the rules are not exactly defined yet, we kind of need to know exactly what kind of thing the game crafts, uh, the, the game actually... Um, Shows you on the on the bank interface. Uh, is there a log? Uh, you know all that kind of stuff that you know people in beta are gathering this information, obviously. But um, you know, and we're we're structuring everything. Uh, but uh, we're not going to have any restrictions for people to join other guilds. We actually encourage them to join other trading guilds for trading purposes and socializing purposes. You know, so Valkandai is the main guild, of course. Your activity has to be here. Our activity requirements don't change. Uh, but um, but you're allowed to be in other guilds to socialize with them or to trade with them because that's healthy. It, it builds up the guild community and, and the economy, right? So uh, we want people to be using um, a lot of the guild bank and, and, and the guild store, uh, and they're going to be communicating with the crafting department on what they can put in, what they can draw, and you know how it works. We're, we have a system coming up right now. But it will depend on how crafting exactly works in other scrolls online, and we know if they are revamping that system um, and testing things. So we're kind of waiting to see exactly how it does. But uh, I'm sure that you know the crafting department is already up. Uh, we have Chris, which is our crafting officer, and uh, you know we're gonna have a, a really simple but solid system for people to trade in the guild. And obviously the informal trading, just put on the guild chat, hey, I need ten, you know, pieces of iron. Oh, I have them. There you go. Thanks. Bye. You know. But for more, you know, expensive and permanent stuff, we're certainly going to have a system using our forums or maybe even an app that we can develop. You know, have some crafty people with programming on the guild that yeah. maybe can work on something like that. Okay. We well, can since we can have five that. guilds, we're going to have uh, actually different departments. So we can actually – the guilds are free to create, right? So um, because of that, we can actually set up – Mostly harmless blacksmithing, mostly harmless, uh, you know, woodworking or you know, sword making, whatever, whatever the provisioning, whatever the crafting skills are in the game, we can set up separate ones with separate banks. Now that's probably my uh, my old Eve days too, partly that uh, uh, not that in SO things are going to go missing from a bank or anything, but uh, but it's quite possible that <laughs> you have a. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's got something caught in my Yeah, because because uh, <laughs> you could. This is a game where the the accounts determine guild uh, abilities and stuff, right? So technically, I could uh, apply to Vokandai under another name. I could join up with them. I could try to get access to their bank, pilfer it all, and put it right into the uh, Daggerfall bank where it belongs. And then, and then go from cool, there. Cool, cool. I see. I see. I see. There's I see what kind of people right? we're dealing with here, man. I see totally. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's those smart, honourable, intelligent and, yeah. people you're recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, so uh, what we're going to do at the Nor is basically is uh, again, it depends upon how the bank structure uh, is when the game launches, but. Um, if it's basically an open bank without any kind of like permissions or ranks or vaults or anything like that, typically the the eight man squads will probably get a couple of people and uh, team up with a, with another eight man squad, and they will form their own small little little guild to where they're just responsible for their sixteen members or ten members or whatever maintaining their own bank. In there, they'll put kind of like what I would call 
valuable items and things that go into the main guild bank, which I don't know might number in the thousands of items. You know, whatever you put in there, you know, it's it's a free for all. If it if it goes, it goes. On a uh, if there aren't any controls uh, in game as to how you can set permissions, you know, you can expect to have your your main guild bank raided, and uh, that's going to happen, unfortunately. So, kind of like localizing it, minimizing it will help minimize the losses. Okay, we'll we'll be sure to note that when we. Uh... <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, let's let's we're, we're gonna wrap things up here. Uh, we had a number of questions here from the audience that uh, we're gonna get to in just a second. Uh, we're gonna skip the Forbes article uh, that was actually covered quite well in Tesocast. So Alistair, uh, plug for Tesocast there that you guys talked about it. Was it a week ago? Yeah, yeah it was. We recorded it on, on uh, last Wednesday, not this one, the other. So yeah, basically a week and a half ago, ten days ago. And uh, we completely pointed out many flaws on, on the article, you know, and kind of assumptions that don't don't work really well. Um, mainly, you know, uh, the uh, pay-to-play um, system that he says is broke and all kind of stuff. But yeah, go listen to that. It's it's really fun. And um, yeah, shameless plug right there. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, turn it over to Vixen. She's just going to mention something about tests. So census. We're talking to that German group, and we're going to try and get them on the next show. Yeah, so basically we came across this TEDSO census website and it keeps track of a bunch of different information including the player race, role, faction choice, and even gender statistics, which is really neat the way it breaks it down. I know Tamriel Fan Foundry does something similar. I just like this one just visually how it looks and it kind of gives you a comparison between each faction. So we linked it in chat. We'll link it again. Feel free to check it out and register right now. They only have about 353 people on there, which we know there's way more Tesso fans out there. So it's small, but it gives us a good idea. Right now, the makeup of the factions is really close. Ebon Heart Pack is in the lead with 35%. Uh, Aldemiri is at 33%, and Daggerfall is at 32%. So really close with the numbers. Um, what do you guys think about these things out here, and do you think you'll use them to check out possible enemies or come up with ideas? What do you guys think? Basically, from the Norse standpoint, we're not uh, we're not too worried about uh, kind of like the other alliances and numbers and, and guilds and everything. We we feel that the responsibility to, of whether we're successful or not successful uh, depends upon our own internal organisation and how we kind of like apply our skills on the uh, on the field of battle, for want of a better word. Yeah, I I, I have a similar stand. Uh, and over at Vulcan Dying, we we think you know it it it's kind of problematic when you start to define your success by your enemies because you don't really control what they're going to do. Um, so you, you can only control what you're going to do, right? So uh, you see what's going on and you come up with a response within your community. You talk to the people, to your friends, and you organize yourself. That's the only way to go. If if you focus too much on what the other guy can do. You end up losing sight of what you can do, and then in the end, it's just you're just crying and complaining about losing. You know, uh, the, the key to being successful is really focusing on what you can do and what you can control in your community with your friends. And then you know, whatever happens outside, you know, uh, it's gonna affect you, of course. But then you kind of have to deal with it as it comes. It, there's no way to go like, oh, we predict there will be more people in this section, so we're gonna do this preventively. Uh, what exactly are you gonna do? You know, it's a, it's just a matter of dealing with the problems as as they get to us. Cool. Oh, well, that sounds good. Do you guys, sorry, Rook. Do you guys think it'll affect um, other people? Like, if they're looking for a guild out there, or your recruitment based off of that? Do you think people will be looking at the numbers and say, "I want to join the guild with the most numbers," or not really? Well, the same way there are people saying that, there are people who are saying, "I don't want to join a big guild," you know, because I want to join something more tight knit and organized instead of a big circle. You know, you, you see a lot of people saying that on, on, the, on the boards out there. So, there, you know, there's guilds for everybody, and there are all kinds of guilds. There are guilds that we know are going to come up, and they're going to be super huge, and then eventually they're just going to disappear, you know, and their members are going to be, now what, you know? And maybe they learn something when that happens, maybe they don't, and maybe they want to join a similar guild, or maybe they just want to be on a completely different guild right at this time. So, it's really, it varies. But I think with the MAGA server, we're not going to have problems with the recruitment pool. You know, there will always be somebody. Because um, it's just, you know, anybody who plays Elder Scrolls Online can, can join the guild, basically. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, choosing. So, yeah. Awesome. 
The uh, I'm gonna get. I know Vic, people in the channel can't hear Vixen just yet, but I'm still gonna get it for the YouTube video since that's where actually the most hits will happen afterwards. Is the longer version of the podcast where we'll get thousands. So uh, and. Uh, She's got the script part for this. There is a contest coming up from Draugen, and uh, I'll let her tell you about it. All right, let me get set up here. Okay, so yes, we're hosting a contest. It's actually hosted by Drogan. They put it on, and we're just going to kind of tell you what they what they told us, basically. So it's about fan fiction, and Drogan is so excited about doing this contest, and this is all the information that they provided by Otter, the, gr the guild leader. Um, he says, everyone is welcome to partake in this epic fan fiction contest. And any fan from any alliance, from any guild, is welcome to submit their own original piece of fan fiction. If you'd like to enter into the contest, please follow these guidelines. The writing must be set to the Elder Scrolls universe. Minimum of 2,500 words, maximum of 6,000 words. Email the entries to Otter, the guild leader of Drogon. We'll put his email address in chat there, and we'll get it out on the video, too. And entries should include a graphic signature about 280 width by 70 height. And why, sh why should you participate in this? Well, who wouldn't want their original character immortalized in an awesome piece of art? The more entries Drogon receives, the more prizes they will give up to third place and first place will get a full colored body picture with the background second place is a waist up colored portrait and third place will get a bust art fully colored as well so you get some art of your characters the contest begins February 8th and ends February 28th at midnight we are looking forward to all the great stories that's great and just for the uh... The Twitch channel that didn't quite get all that, uh, got a nice number of viewers there. Thanks so much for everybody for coming out. The the contest, uh, I think, Asher, you're going to link it there maybe, but uh, 2,500 to 6,000 words, and it's you're going to get a really nice prize. Uh, we're going to have more on that on the the YouTube video. You'll be able to hear it all there, um, but I'll let Asher list it, or Asha list it in, uh, in channel as to where to go. Um, in terms of plugs, one second here. I've got, I think it was Clot... Clotfam in the uh, the channel here, uh, really nice uh, comment. Just that, uh, uh, basically, oh, <laughs> the Twitch channel is going too fast for me to see it. <laughs> basically, they said <laughs> that uh, uh, that they were really happy that people were making guilds for a game that's not already out. It's not out till April fourth, and we're doing this already. And that we're talking more about the guilds. There's a lot of shows that are uh, rehashing, uh, the, unfortunately, the lack of news that's out there at the moment. But we really want to talk about the guild structures and guilds and and who you might want to join and who the uh, the characters are out there that's going to make this uh, game great uh we said it before it's great people make good games even better so uh it's certainly something to think about as to who you're going to pair up with uh, in the in the uh in this game uh you can start your shout outs in the twitch channel now and we'll do the best we can with those that were mailed to us as well um i'll do some of the mailed shout outs now while people are doing the uh, the ones in the twitch channel here i see already in channel there's uh, severity gaming all these shoutouts count towards the competition, so if you happen to, of the uh, almost 100 people here, if, if uh, 50 of you are all from one guild, that could be 50 points. Um, okay, it's starting to go. <laughs> uh, but Dutch Guild, uh, of course, it's very late at night for them. Solution, uh, I've been chatting with them a fair bit. Uh, they're, they're very interested in coming on the uh, the Euro show we're going to do at some point in time. Uh, I've been talking with Dragon from Syndicate. Uh, again, Guinness Book of World Records for the oldest guild, very organized. They had Brian Wheeler at one of their conferences. Um, and other uh, certainly big names. Uh, guild 7, a German guild that we've gotten to know a bit better, uh, doing some neat things. The 13th Legion, and uh, Tidos from Chu. Actually, we were supposed to save that for next... Oh, well, whatever. Uh, it's Pain Train. <laughs> and uh, Rutz uh, Rutsuko uh, from Sin uh, over in, uh, across the ocean there, uh, another great group. Um, the other... Oh, okay, let's try and get these Vokendine, Vokendine, lots of Vokendine shouts here, of course. They're uh, very good at motivating their members to come out. And uh, Legend Gaming, of course, is part of Vokendine. Severity Gaming, see a number of shoutouts for that. Um, we've got uh, Draugen. They're doing the contest, and, and I really want you to... Oh, and of course, Mostly Harmless. Uh, thanks. And uh, yeah, a lot of members there from that. We're trying not to make... And just a few more shout-outs. Uh, Seiko, Eso Brotherhood Guild Launch, uh, dot com. Uh, 
believe that was an Eld Mary PvP slash PvE guild there. Uh, it's going by pretty quick here. Karaneth, the Brotherhood of Redemption, Mischief Guild. Uh, for the Tribunal, I'm guessing that's a guild. Acolytes, uh, someone's asking if Acolytes are here. And uh, Morag Tong, a heavy RP guild. Uh, sorry, I didn't get to read that all as quickly as I'd like, but uh, we'll certainly take the mails and include those next time. The show. Um, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, all the uh, the goodwill. Um, and representing Zorak, representing the Nor for the Queen, he says. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that better not be me, Zoro. <laughs> You'd make the a next, great Queen D. That's what we're going to get you to wear next time, yeah. Yeah, great. The, uh, the next contest uh, closing one week before our next podcast. Uh, I believe the next podcast, we're doing them every four weeks. We might reschedule uh, just off by a week based on um, uh, one of the guilds that's not able to make that time, but is a, is a big guild and we want to get them on here. Uh, so we'll see if we can work that out. And it might be a slightly different time for the Euros. So you can just look at this channel. We will have an updated time as to when the next podcast is. And of course, it'll be advertised in Tamriel Chronicle. They've been putting us in every time and very, very helpful there with Zoss. Uh, Zenimax, I can't say enough about Zenimax. Uh, this is a group that is so... Uh, you know, I mean, they're just so organized. They send out Christmas cards. They've got their own... Where's the stamp? That They've got their own stamp from... Uh, yeah, look, I mean, they got... <laughs> the stamp actually uh, shows uh, their name on it. They they came on our team speak the other day for a meeting we had. They are super organized, and I appreciate that about Zenimax. That, uh, they're really awesome. Uh, the prize for the shoutouts on the YouTube videos and on the Twitch channel that will count up, that is uh, for new guilds. We're not going to give out another one to Unreal Aussies and Volkandine for a little bit here, but uh, they did amazing, both of them. Uh, they had over 60 or more votes each. So it was within like one point. And uh, not wanting to recount all 120, we just, it's a tie because both of them did amazing. A lot of shout outs on the YouTube videos. Shout outs on any of the previous podcast YouTube videos do count. The prize, uh, we'll be giving out games. We might be doing a golf bag again. Uh, I'll show you in the YouTube video, you'll see the golf bag that Dragon just received. And uh, Nora took the video game on a previous episode there. Uh, but more importantly, a little PR for your guild, just to be able to say that you were the winner of that particular month's. So that's good. Um, Bragging rights for the win. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so this is Rook with Mostly Harmless, and we'll see you out on the battlefield. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs>